Hey you guys, it's Nathan Collins back with another video. I was working on a photo yesterday. I posted up a video sharing about how to blur a photo. And it worked okay, but there were still some kind of issues with the method that I showed. And in that video, I wasn't completely pleased with how it all um, was done, but I think that video can be looked at as kind of a part one to this video. So if you haven't seen part one yet, go back and watch part one to learn things like uh, cutting out the subject of a photo and also how an invert that and also save out the subject of the photo. So those are separate and you bring them back together. So then you can have full manipulation over this, uh, the background or the foreground, whatever you want to cut out. Uh, so definitely check that video out. Uh, the link is down below or on the screen. Um, now, with that also uh, out of the way, we can kind of jump right into the way that I found to fix this image. So there's a free way and there's also a paid way to do it. The free way is just using uh, the draw tool, the paid way, which would be if you have the paid version, the Photoscape X Pro that would be using the clone stamp uh, and that is a pro feature so let me show you with the clone stamp versus the draw uh, as well so this kind of gets a little interesting but bear with me you can do it if you follow along you can uh, do this exactly what i'm doing so go to clone stamp um, and i'll do half the photo one way and half the photo the other way to show you that there's basically no difference in clone stamp if you haven't ever learned it before, definitely check it out. Check out my face switch video um, and my remove videos. Basically, I can click on a, one part of the photo and I can paste that on another part. So like if I wanted to make this instead of 200, 2000, I could click here. I could paste it right there. And there you go. You have 2000. And if you're precise with it, you can really make it look convincing. And it's, I think, a lot of fun. So very neat. Uh, but what we're doing today is we're going to fill in this with just color because the issue that we're having is that this is a transparent background here and when it blurs it's actually blurring uh into the image because it's kind of smearing everything around kind of to make that blur and that means uh the color is going into the transparent part and the transparent part is also going out to that non-transparent part so what we're doing here is filling in the color so then we don't have to worry about that transparent reaching all the way in so what we do is we're going to click here we're going to paste in and we're not doing this like in a super precise way but what we're doing is we are just filling in these splotches with color uh, when you're doing this make sure your uh, settings over here for your clone stamp are strength and hardness like basically a hundred uh, you don't want to have any transparency left in the image. So hopefully with doing some of this, I can make this really, really good for you guys. All right. Good. Nice. Okay, and we can make sure the bottom gets done as well. Just going to get some of that brick. Gonna paste it down into here. And as you can see, I'm not being like super precise or anything crazy with this. And it's something that, yes, if you play around with it a little bit, you'll pick it up pretty easily, uh, in my opinion. So definitely, definitely, I think, a doable project if you're wanting a weekend project to work on or something like that. Here's a fun weekend project that you can probably sink your teeth into. So we've done it on one side of the image. So what we did was we made, uh, we just filled in that side. Now. I'm going to show you the free way, which is just using the draw tool. Draw tool, pick something that's kind of a splotch design. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to 
And I was trying to figure this out. If there's a quick way to do the color picker, I want to find a quick like control key or something to pick out the color. But basically, you go in here. I'm going to select the color of the ground, and then I hit OK. And I'm going to go and I'm going to paint in the ground. OK. So you got that nice. Next, I'm going to paint in the frame of the door. I'm going to paint that in, make sure that it's all in there. Nice. And feel free to like, like you can even do this because it all gets covered at the end. I'll show you, but don't feel like you have to like be super precise with it. All right. So we have that. Next, we're going to grab the door, that bluish color. And we're going to do that. Get that up into there. Okay. Yeah, that blue would probably be across here like that. And I could do like the windows or different things, but when you're doing this, it doesn't have to be like crazy precise. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You're what you're doing is you're just covering this up with colors that would most likely be the colors that you would see in the rest of the image. So we have that all painted in. It's kind of a weird blur in and of itself, uh, if you look at it that way. But now, what I can do is I can go to Insert. I can hit Insert Image. And I'm going to insert the exact same image that we were working on originally. So this same image again. And it comes in. And I'm going to scale it to 100. And then I'm going to slide it over. And there you have it. Now you're probably asking yourself, what, why? Well, the reason why is because we want this to fill in. But when you do the clone stamp, you're going to mess up the edges anyhow. So then it'll end up showing, and you don't want that. So we're putting the image back over itself to be able to fix any mistakes that you made, anything that got overlapped in. So now it's so much simpler. Um, all right, so we have that. We're going to go to save, and we're going to save this out. So hit save. And the reason why we're saving it is so it can all just be one image, not two separate layers, because you can't work on the two separate layers um, as well as you can just with the one, if that's kind of your process. So now we have this image. And yes, it's the exact same thing, but there is no second layer. There's nothing in there. That's just the straight image. It looks pretty good. Um, and if I zoom in super close, I can see some of like Bree's hair or my wife's hair. And I'm like, ooh, what's that up with that? Probably because it got cut out. And, you know, that's not a problem unless if you really are picky. The cutout is just as well as you can do it and as much precision and time you, you want to invest into it. So I can go to image now. I can go and find this cutout image. Um, so of my wife, definitely watch part one if you haven't seen part one. But you get that in, you're going to line it up. We're going to zoom in close. Okay. All right, make sure it's lined up. I can use my arrow keys to be as precise as I can. All right, looks good. So now I'm zooming out. Now this is where the magic happens, guys. Before, we'd end up with this purple smudge, or we would end up with transparency leaking into the photo. Now we just go over to edit and we hit uh, in adjustments, go to blur. And now I can bump that blur up a ton and I can zoom in. And sure enough, there is no bleed from that transparency. And you can look at the colors as far as how does that blur look, even if it's, you know, a little bit of a blur, a lot of a blur, like in my personal opinion, there is nothing where it's showing where it's like, whoa, that looks totally off. No, man, that's awful. And like I was showing you guys, and I can still go to insert. Um, and I can move this image out of the way. And you can look and see what that blur is actually doing. Um, oh, I didn't s tell it to save the blur. You can see that. It's blurring it. And it's not messing it up. It's not doing anything crazy with it. Therefore, I can do that. I can put her back in the image. 
and you know you put it where she's supposed to be you can do that you can also increase the size if you want to increase the size you know it's your call but all that i'm saying is that that blur is now totally able to uh work it's totally able to function um and not mess with that part of the image and those edges are not going to end up with a glow effect unless if you want a glow effect where if you want one yes you can put one in but it will be something where you have full control over it not that the software is going to be you know upset with you so you can put in the blur if you want it uh, you can also put a gradient uh no so you can put that blur in but it is only what you want it to be and you can you know whatever color you want it to be and it's your call not oh man, I gotta be, I gotta live with this. So you guys, I think this looks really good, really sharp, doesn't end up with those mistakes, those blurs, those different things. Um, so let me know if you guys find this helpful. Let me know if this is, you know, an adequate way of showing how to add blur to a photo um, using that cutout uh, style. Um, but I think it's just so important because you end up with that perfect distinction between your background and foreground and there's not going to be blurs and messes um, and that's something that I wanted to get uh, fixed to show you guys so you guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one and let me know if there's any other way that I could improve this uh, above what I already have it thank you guys bye